San Francisco, 2014. The lights dim inside Moscone West. Thousands of developers lean forward in their seats, notebooks and laptops balanced on their knees. On the giant screen, a single word fades in, swift. Apple's Craig Federighi strides onto the stage, grinning, and delivers a line that will echo for years, Objective-C, without the baggage of C. Objective-C has served us so well for 20 years, we absolutely love it. But we had to ask ourselves the question, what would it be like if we had Objective-C without the baggage of C? At first, there's silence, an attempt to process what's being said. Then the applause comes, rolling through the hall like a wave. Most people don't yet grasp the full weight of what they're seeing. Apple is not previewing a research project. It's handing developers a finished language, available to download that same day. A language that in time will rewrite the DNA of Apple's platforms. To understand how this moment arrived, we have to go back four years. In 2010, one of Apple's most respected compiler engineers was spending his evenings in quiet experimentation. Chris Lapner, best known inside Apple for creating LLVM, the compiler infrastructure that had transformed how code was built and optimized, had begun tinkering with an idea. Nights and weekends, he started sketching a new language. He jokingly called it Shiny. The motivation was simple, in words but ambitious in practice. Latner wanted a language that was simultaneously safe, clear, and fast. Too often, languages forced a trade-off. You could have speed and power at the cost of subtle, dangerous bugs. Or you could have clarity and safety, but with performance too slow for demanding apps. Latner wondered, what if you didn't have to choose? As the prototype grew, others joined. Doug Greger, an expert in generics, lent his skill in designing type systems. John McCall, a gifted compiler engineer, worked on the language's core semantics. Bertrand Selle, then Apple's head of software engineering, pushed and encouraged the team. What began as one man's side project slowly evolved into a coordinated effort, though still hidden within Apple's walls. Apple couldn't simply drop a new programming language into the world without warning. Developers had spent decades mastering Objective-C, building apps and entire businesses on its quirks. So Apple began to lay the tracks in public, incremental improvements to Objective-C that also served another purpose. In 2011, automatic reference counting arrived, freeing developers from the manual retain and release cycle of memory management. Literals and modules followed, stripping away layers of boilerplate that had become second nature to veterans. Each of these changes was marketed as an enhancement to Objective-C. But behind the scenes there were also breadcrumbs, leading developers step by step toward a new philosophy, a world where safety and clarity were baked into the language itself. By the time Swift was ready to be shown, the ecosystem had already been nudged toward the habits and assumptions it would require. Swift did not appear from thin air, it was a synthesis of ideas drawn from languages that had influenced Chris Latner and his colleagues. From Objective-C, it inherited interoperability with Cocoa and the dynamic features that made Apple's platforms flexible. But Swift pushed away from the fragility of pointers and the silent pitfalls of nil. From the world of functional programming languages like Haskell and ML, it absorbed the discipline of immutability, the safety of optionals to represent absence, and the power of strong static typing. From Rust, which was emerging around the same time, it drew inspiration for memory safety without garbage collection, though Swift chose a different path by leaning on Arc and value semantics. From Python and Ruby, it took readability and approachability, syntax that felt clear, expressive, and close to natural thought. The goal was never imitation. It was to blend these traditions into something uniquely suited for Apple's platforms, fast enough for system programming, clear enough for beginners, and safe enough for modern software at scale. That vision crystallized on June 2, 2014. When Apple unveiled Swift at WWDC, it did something extraordinary. It didn't just announce the language, it released a complete digital book, the Swift programming language, free to download that same day. It added Xcode playgrounds, letting developers write Swift interactively, seeing results live on screen, and it revealed almost casually that parts of Apple's own WWDC app were already running in Swift. For developers used to slow, careful transitions, this was a shock. Swift wasn't theoretical, it was already real, already tested, and already trusted enough to appear in Apple's own products. Before we continue, a quick but important note, because building fast, interactive apps isn't just about language design or compiler speed. Enter Convex, sponsor of this video, a full-stack backend as a service that pairs beautifully with Swift's clarity and safety. If Swift gives you strong typing, optionals, and compile time guarantees, Convex gives you the backend muscle to make your apps dynamic, real-time, and scalable without boilerplate or endless infrastructure work. The real magic is Convex Chef, an AI app builder that doesn't just spit out throwaway snippets. Chef understands full-stack architecture. It wires up authentication, file storage, 
background jobs, and real-time sync on top of Convex's reactive data model. You describe the app, Chef builds it, fully functional, real-time, ready to deploy. Try it yourself, head to convex.link slash codesource. Describe the app you want and see how far you can go without writing a single line of back-end code while keeping your core app logic in Swift. Convex and Swift together, that's expressive language design meeting back-end intelligence. Now, let's get back to the story of Swift. The exhilaration didn't last forever. Swift's early years were turbulent. Syntax shifted between versions. Naming conventions were debated and changed. Entire features disappeared. In 2016, Swift 3 marked a deliberate break. The language dropped C style for loops, removed the plus and minus operators, and overhauled API naming. Apple had warned the developers from the start that Swift would be unstable in its early years, but the reality of migration was still painful. Teams lost weekends rewriting code, build errors piled up, yet out of that frustration came a more consistent, durable language surface, one that would serve the community for the long haul. The turning point came on December 3, 2015, when Apple open-sourced Swift. What had been built in secrecy now unfolded in public view. The Swift evolution process was born, proposals drafted, debated, revised and voted on in the open. Developers worldwide could now watch language design in real time. They saw arguments over removing operators, discussions about access control, and the painstaking redesign of how String handled Unicode. Some decisions passed easily, others stirred heated controversy, but the process itself became a lesson. The craft of language design is messy, opinionated, and deeply human. By 2017, the benefits began to show. Swift 4 introduced Codable, turning the error-prone forest of model mapping into a straightforward protocol. Developers who had once written pages of parsing code found themselves deleting it overnight. In 2019, Swift 5 delivered ABI stability. Apps no longer needed to ship the Swift runtime inside themselves. They became smaller, faster to launch, and more stable across versions. For many, this was the signal that Swift had grown up, no longer a moving target, but a permanent part of Apple's platforms. That same year, Apple unveiled SwiftUI, a declarative framework for building interfaces across iOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. Swift was no longer just the language of apps, it was reshaping how developers thought about design itself. While Swift was born in Cupertino, its ambitions grew wider. In 2020, official toolchains for Windows arrived. On servers, frameworks like Vapor began handling real traffic, powered by Swift NIO's event-driven engine. Suddenly, Swift wasn't just a client-side language tied to iPhones and Macs, it was proving itself on the back-end, and even across platforms Apple didn't control. For years, concurrency was Swift's missing piece. Developers relied on grand central dispatch and callback pyramids to juggle tasks, but the patterns were error-prone and exhausting. In 2021, Swift 5.5 brought a breakthrough. Async await, actors, and structured concurrency. Suddenly, complex asynchronous code read like a straightforward story. Cancellation gained teeth. Data races could be caught at compile time. For developers raised on folklore about thread safety, it felt like moving from a tightrope to a paved road with guardrails. The frequent source-breaking changes of the early years left some developers bruised. Access control debates introduced new keywords like file private and forced teams to adapt their habits. And some worried that despite open source governance, Apple still steered Swift too firmly in its own direction. But each friction point left the language stronger. Decisions that seemed painful in the moment often revealed their worth later, making Swift more coherent, safer, and easier to teach. Swift's story doesn't end on a stage or in a GitHub thread. It lives in quieter places. In a classroom, a student taps run in Swift playgrounds and watches a puzzle come alive, discovering the joy of making logic visible. In a hospital, a diagnostics app updates safely across devices because the language made it difficult to be careless with memory or concurrency. In a dim office, a developer replaces a tangle of callbacks with a single await and watches a test turn green. Swift began as an after-hours sketch by a compiler engineer. It grew through years of secret work, public argument, and painful migrations. It borrowed from many languages, but became something distinct, and it continues to evolve in public, a living record of the belief that performance, readability, and safety don't have to compete. The legend will always be the keynote surprise of 2014, but the truth is quieter and better. Swift changed not just how we build apps, but how we think about code itself.